Today's story is about a young couple whose anniversary celebration went terribly wrong. They wanted to do something fun for their special day and after thinking about it for a little while, they decided on a hang gliding adventure. They signed up with a local hang gliding company in British Columbia and they were super eager to try it for the first time. They trusted this local company to give them this experience of a lifetime, but in a split second, that celebration turned into a horrific nightmare. The power of flight, it's something that many humans want to experience. It's what draws us to sports like hang gliding, paragliding, kite surfing, hot air ballooning, parachuting, bungee jumping, and even that crazy sport of base jumping. Hang gliding actually started up in the 1960s and it fulfilled that dream of accessible, inexpensive, bird-like flight for humans. It's like seeing a kite up in the air and wishing you could be up there with it. Well, hang gliding is basically that. It's just a big kite that you're attached to. The fundamental design of the hang glider, it's remained fairly constant since it started. The pilot lays prone, suspended in a harness at the center of gravity beneath a swept wing. That wing is made of fabric and metal tubes and it's reinforced by bracing and ribs and internal spars. The top half of the pilot's body pokes through that triangular frame with two down tubes and a control bar. Pulling in on the bar increases speed and dives the glider, while pushing on it makes the glider climb and lose speed. Shifting the body left turns the glider left and shifting to the right turns it right. Early hang gliding, it actually had a really poor safety record, which is not a surprise when you're just kind of hurling yourself on makeshift kites off of cliffs. They're basically doing it by trial and error, and those people are absolute legends for trial and erroring a glorified kite that could plummet to the ground at any minute. But advances in pilot training and glider construction, that all improve safety records. And the typical risks associated with hang gliding are weather, equipment, other gliders nearby, but most accidents are actually the result of pilot error. Lanami Avila was a 28-year-old student who'd been living in British Columbia for nine years. She was raised in Mexico and Peru and is really proud of her heritage. She moved from Mexico to Canada to study at Simon Fraser University. And that's where she received her BA in Economics and Latin American Studies in 2006. She was a lifelong student who attended the University of Lima, Simon Fraser University, University of British Columbia, and Royal Roads University. And Lanami just totally embraced her life in BC. She really loved it and she fit in well and naturally made a lot of friends. She studied hard and she worked hard and she also volunteered a lot. Her first full-time job was with the BC Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games. During her time in Canada, Lanami developed a passion and strong commitment to the environment. She volunteered for food waste programs and eventually pursued her environmental interest in her career with the Ministry of the Environment. Lanami loved her family and was in frequent touch with them even though they were far away back in Mexico, but she'd enthusiastically explain her Mexican traditions and culture to all her friends. She shared her love of making traditional foods and also loved trying new things and coming up with innovative meals. And her friends said she just had an absolute zest for life. Lanami had a Canadian boyfriend named David and they've been dating for a few years. And one day in 2012, David was trying to figure out a great way to celebrate their anniversary. So he wanted to make the day a special one. So he looked into hang gliding and contacted a local company called Vancouver Hang Gliding and he booked flights with them. John Orders was the owner of Vancouver Hang Gliding and he was 51 years old. He was born and raised in New Zealand where he earned a trade certificate in welding. He ended up marrying a Canadian and they had one daughter and then they moved to Canada. A couple years later they split up and he remained in Canada so he could be close to his daughter. John had been involved in hang gliding for 18 years and was really experienced. On his website he said that even as a child he had nightly dreams of flying like a bird or Superman. He started flying in 1994 in Perth, Australia and dedicated his life to hang gliding at every opportunity that he got. He just loved being outdoors and he was addicted to the sport. And he loved sharing that passion with others. 
He represented Canada internationally, competing in the Hang Gliding World Championships in 2007. And he placed second overall in the 2006 Canadian Nationals and competed in the Nationals for 10 years, placing in the top six every year. He'd served many years on the board of directors for the West Coast Soaring Club, either as a competition director or a safety director. And his personal best distance was a flight of 255 kilometers or 158 miles. And he was in the air for a total of seven hours. So he loved the sport so much that in 2009, he opened Vancouver Hang Gliding and his company offered tandem hang gliding flights to the public. And he operated the business kind of in his spare time on the side as he continued to work full time as a welder. So on the morning of April 28th, 2012, John, his assistant, Sean, and the couple, Lanami and David, traveled together to the launch site on Mount Woodside. Mount Woodside is situated in the Fraser Valley near the confluence of the Harrison and Fraser Rivers. It's a favorite spot with hang gliders and paragliders in the valley. It stares right into the natural prevailing winds, which are necessary to give lift, and it offers this breathtaking view of these blue-green waters of Harrison Bay, the muddy waters of the Fraser River, and the community of Chilliwack. So the West Coast Soaring Club, they describe this launch site as one of their most high profile and valued sites. It has smooth coastal influenced air combined with pleasant thermals, which are well away from the hill. And they also talk about the hazards that are there. They say to be aware of outflow winds north and east that can create dangerous rotor. The site can blow out in the afternoon, especially in the summer. So the four of them took this bumpy, rocky, slow nine kilometer drive up the Forest Service Road to the launch site. Once they got there, John and his assistant started unpacking the hang gliding equipment and assembled the two hang gliders. Lenami and David were excited and stood atop the mountain just soaking in the amazing views below them. The plan was that Lenami would fly tandem with John and David would go next with Sean. Lanami and David were given instructions on flight procedures and then they were suited up with their harnesses and helmets. That day, John had installed a new video camera on the front of his hang glider to record the flight. And that footage would be given to the passengers so they could have a memory of their experience. At flight time, John gave Lanami last minute instructions. He did a few more pre-flight checks and then they were ready to go. They ran down the launch area and began to lift off. Witnesses say that they noticed that they ran a little bit further down the slope than usual before taking off, which was a bit odd. And seconds into the flight, people on the ground immediately realized that something was drastically wrong. Instead of being shoulder to shoulder with John, Lanami was actually hanging below him. It looked like she was not connected to the hang glider at all. There's no reason that she should have been hanging like she was if she was connected properly. So for the next 30 seconds or so, Lanami desperately tried to hold on to John in the control bar. John immediately tried to grab her with his hands and even his feet. And as he tried to reach her carabiner while attempting to steer the hang glider with one arm, he wanted to grab it and connect it to something. Lanami hung on as long as she could, but she was slowly losing her grip. It would have required immense strength to hang on. And not long after that, she just couldn't hang on any longer. She fell to the ground and fell about 400 meters or 1300 feet. Her boyfriend and witnesses watched just horrified from the launch site. As you can imagine, it would have been terrifying and he was just screaming at her to hang on. Watching from the ground, Nicole McLaren saw things go wrong right after takeoff. It looked like he was still horizontal, but she was now hanging vertically. And it looked like she had, in essence, had him in a bear hug around the chest area. Then horribly, McLaren says Godinez tried to save herself by clinging to the pilot. I could see her starting to slip down his body, um, you know, down the legs, down, you know, past the waist, down the legs. She finally, you know, finally she got to the feet and, you know, tried to hang on and obviously couldn't hang on for that much longer and, and let go, tearing off the tandem pilot shoes in the process. David yelled that he loved her as she fell down to the ground. After Lanami fell, John landed at their designated landing zone about two minutes later. And then the police arrived shortly after that. John told him that he lost his passenger somewhere in the clearing on the mountainside and he assisted the police to look for her, but it actually took them seven more hours to find her. She had died instantly on impact. At some point, John returned to the landing area when the officers asked if he had a GPS device or a camera on his glider and 
He said that he didn't have the GPS device, but he did have a video camera and his assistant, Sean, had gathered it up and took it away with the rest of the gear. So police tracked Sean down and they found and seized the camera. And not long after that, John had spoken with a safety officer for the Hang Gliding and Paragliding Association of Canada. And he told him that he panicked and actually swallowed the memory card from the video camera. And then John informed police that he did that, but he wasn't sure why as he panicked. And he said he regretted it as soon as he did it. So they took him to the police station and he was remorseful and crying and really upset about the incident. Then they took him to the hospital where an x-ray confirmed that there was a memory card inside of him. He remained in police custody and took some medication to assist in expelling the memory card, which came out shortly after. And that memory card showed the events of that fateful day from the takeoff to the fall. John's cell phone was also seized and it showed that prior to takeoff, the carabiner was clipped to the right shoulder of Lanami's harness instead of actually to the hang glider itself. An investigation by the Hang Gliding and Paragliding Association of Canada concluded that human error, not weather or faulty equipment, caused Lanami to fall to her death. They also concluded that the pilot did not perform a pre-ride hang check. That's a common safety check where the pilot and passenger hang from the glider while they're still on the ground. That ensures that they're both connected to the hang glider. So John was charged and initially pleaded not guilty to criminal negligence, causing death and obstruction of justice. His lawyer said the case was a complicated, serious case and difficult for everyone involved. And later he changed his plea to guilty on both counts. William John Orders now says he is guilty of criminal negligence causing death and obstruction of justice in the incident. John Orders fought through tears as he apologized to Lenami Godinez Avila's family. But her loved ones aren't anxious to see him jailed for criminal negligence in her terrifying death two years ago. They don't want him taken away from his daughter because that's what he did to them permanently. The court determined and confirmed that Lanami fell because her harness wasn't attached to the glider. The defense counsel said that there were a number of things that may have played a role in John neglecting to attach Lanami to the hang glider. And those things were that he was coordinating two launches at the same time. And that he and Sean had an argument that morning. He was also anxious about an appearance at family law court coming up involving his minor daughter. He was operating a new remote video camera system and the launch procedure was interrupted when he had to re-instruct Lanami on how to launch. In the judge's ruling, it was noted that John was extremely remorseful for his actions. And letters came in from the hang gliding community speaking of how conscientious he was about safety. In fact, he was a safety director for the West Coast Soaring Club for a number of years. He even organized safety workshops for pilots. But the judge told him that Although he was a well-trained and experienced pilot, he was expected to work through distractions. Connecting Lanami was a fundamental step in the procedure, not just a minor step that should be overlooked because of distractions. So in the end, John Orders was convicted of criminal negligence causing death and sentenced to five months in jail. He also received three years probation and could no longer engage in hang gliding as a pilot or a passenger. The judge also ruled that he must do 25 hours of community service speaking about the incident and the importance of safety to the community. Although his hang gliding license was revoked, he told the court that he would never hang glide again because of what happened. Her friends later said that Lanami was a bright and caring, charismatic person and that they missed her terribly. She contributed greatly to the community around her, and in honor of that, her friends and family set up a memorial award fund at Simon Fraser University in her name. Lanami had often shared her desire to establish an award that would benefit international students, so this award did just that. They gave money to international students who had to relocate. And over the years, it helped a number of international students, but I'm not sure if it still exists. The last I saw on it was about 2016 or so, but it did help a number of people over a few years. So in researching this, I came across a number of stories where this exact thing happened. And if you want to look further into this and see an incredible video that went viral a few years ago, check it out. It's in the description below. It's about a guy who was on a tandem flight in Switzerland. His pilot didn't attach his carabiner to the hang glider either. And there's a full video of the flight, almost four minutes of absolute terror, watching this guy hang from the hang glider as the pilot tried to land and hang on to him at the same time. But this guy survived as he managed to hang on for the whole flight, which is amazing. 
he was able to hang on until they got close enough to the ground where he just had to let go because he had no more strength in him. He actually tore his bicep tendon hanging on and then when he fell, he broke his arm. So now I don't think I'll ever go hang gliding. Or if I do, I will ensure that we do the hang test. So let me know if you've ever tried hang gliding and how was it? And if you haven't, would you go after hearing this story?